Welcome back to Amy Jane's Studios. This is my brand new series. This one is all about color, color, color. I'm going to share all the knowledge in my head about color with you. This first video is an introduction for your materials. We're going to get you all set up so you'll have everything you need to do the lessons. And then we're going to get to learning and get to creating. And you know, I always say it, I've said it before and I'll say it again. You have to actually draw and paint. You have to actually do get a brush or a pencil or whatever we're using in your hand. You have to actually do, don't just watch. So with that said, now let's talk about materials. We're going to be starting with watercolor. It's possible we've all experienced watercolors before. We get these little things as kids we go at it, we have some fun, we get to slosh some water around and it's great, but it's actually one of the hardest things to use. But we're gonna have some fun and we're gonna fall back on those drawing skills from my previous series. I'm gonna show you many different options for watercolor, all ranging in price, and I will set them up in my kit.co account for Amazon links so that you can order what you need. Just check down in that description below. I actually don't recommend the children's watercolors. If that's all you got, great. And they're great for children for learning motor skills and, and experimenting, but they just don't really give good color. Now this is our top option. It's what the pros use. It consists of individual tubes of watercolor paints that are professional that you squeeze into little bays and little wells in a plastic container like this. With this option, you can choose your own palette. You're creating a palette just for yourself. Once you squeeze the paint into your little wells, you can leave it there and use it just like the watercolors in the kids' paints. They do make at a pretty professional level and less expensive a travel kit. These paints are really high quality, but it's for sketching and doing very small works. You could definitely start with this, no problem. Rather than the Pro, which are more expensive tubes, they do. it does come in sets of colors that are predetermined as far as what colors you get, but this is a less expensive option. And you can use these tubes the same if you get a container and it has the wells, you can create the palette. It's just you're limited to these colors. If you really are on a tight, tight budget, we do have an option that looks a lot like the kids' paints, but these actually aren't terrible quality paints and you get a little place here to mix. They're already set up in the ovals, just like the child, but these actually will give you good color. You'll be able to mix them relatively easy. They're just not as high quality. The next thing we need to talk about are brushes. You get some of these watercolor brushes can be very expensive and very nice, and it's worth every penny. Winsor Newton makes the most expensive one, the Series 7, but these are really great. You don't have to buy one, but you'll notice a big difference. These other lower end, brushes, they work perfectly fine. Stay within your price range. And I recommend as far as sizes go, getting one that's a little bit larger and one that's a little bit smaller. Although one large brush or one medium sized brush that can come down into a nice little point will also do. So a couple of sizes is okay, but having one brush is fine too. You do want the brush to be able to hold water. Uh, some brushes hold more water than others. I find that this style of brush holds a lot of water. This is actual squirrel hair made in Russia. Now let's talk paper. This is a watercolor block. It's a block because it is heared on all sides and so the paper is mounted and it, it holds it still so that the paper won't bubble and bow when you add water to it. What you're gonna to wanna to do with any paper is look at the pounds. This is 140 pounds, which is a very good weight, a very good thickness. Even if you're getting less expensive paper, I would stick to about 140 pounds. So the watercolor blocks come in different kinds. It, you'll see it says hot press or cold press. A cold press will be very, very rough and have a lot of texture to it. A hot press will be very smooth. Inexpensive watercolor paper like this is also a good option. 140 pounds, not too expensive. I would recommend, because it is loose and it is not adhered to a block, you could tape it down or 
mount it to a board yourself, either with tape or a staple. That way it'll help to keep that from bowing as the water is added to it. And we will also use a pencil and a kneaded eraser at various different points throughout the lessons. Last but not least is water. Actual water. <laughs> we need water. You're going to need some receptacles to hold water. I like to have a big one and a littler one. The big one I will get really dirty. It's for the initial rinse and then I take a second rinse to get nice and clean in a smaller vessel. They can be the same size, it doesn't matter. Da, 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 da. And I recommend having some paper towels for dabbing. Sometimes there's too much water on your brush, this kind of thing. So to wrap it up, paints, brush, water containers, paper, paper towel, pencil eraser. Use those Amazon links. Help me out. Kit.co. Get everything organized. We will go. That rhymed. <laughs> we are gonna have some fun. <laughs> I can't wait. You're on a mission. And you're gonna get all these materials and meet me back here next week on YouTube.